Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm actually really nervous. I've never spoken to this many like pros, so bear with me You're if I. We're pros. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, pros in spirit, right? Like we took the initiative to be here, so that's what counts. But um, yes, my name is Flo, full name Florence. People call me Flo Joe, Hustle and Flo, the progressive commercial, all those like jokes. I've heard them. Don't use them, please. But <laughs> um, as mentioned, I have my bio in here as well. I've been blessed enough to have a really like interesting career as a photographer. I started off um, in high school, so I remember coming to B&H um, on financial aid, like, dang, who's going to pay for this lens? I don't know. But, <laughs> but um, I'm really happy to be able to be like given this platform to talk about what I've done. Um, I kind of made my way in the photo industry through celebrity photography and music photography. As mentioned, I had a big break, so to speak, by working with um, celebrities. And I'll get into how my transition from portrait photography as a high school student um, and street photography as well kind of evolved into talking to strangers. So the name of this presentation is Talking to Strangers, a lesson on portrait photography. And that's just inspired by the first rule of thumb, you know, we get growing up, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. And I think that as photographers, sometimes there's like this social anxiety that we don't talk about, whether you're um, a photojournalist, street photographer, like there's a thing that comes with approaching someone you don't know. And I think um, when I was thinking about what I could possibly talk about with this crowd, I felt like a lot of questions I get is like, you know, how do you work with an artist or how do you um, you know, meet people for the first time and have 10 tech, you know, 10 minutes to get the shot. Like, what, what does that process look like? So I wanted to start with this picture. This was like my first real job, um, and it was documented on TMZ. Um, so that's funny. And this meme, oh, that's me on the bottom right. But this meme, you know, like the freeze frame, like, er, you're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> I felt like this was <laughs> this for me. So, um, I, and this is also just a funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always got to put a little humor in the presentation, you know, keep things spicy. So um, it started on set. My, like my career as I know it now started on set. This is a BTS image taken of an artist named Fat Joe. He's a legacy New Yorker hip hop legend. Um, I was invited onto that set as an extra, brought my camera, was really excited to take photos for my budding Tumblr and my website. And I just cold emailed a bunch of the producer, director, people on set, and long story short, that kind of led to um, opportunities to work with artists. But before this, this was sort of what I was always really interested in, right? Like, in a weird way, just kind of capturing the essence of people's souls or something, like eye contact. You know, I remember being in school and being like, why would people take pictures of trees when you can capture people? Like, <laughs> no shade, pun intended. <laughs> And um, yeah, so these are like three people um, who I'm now better friends with, um, Aziz on the left and Samira in the middle. But I met Samira thrifting um, at a Goodwill in Harlem, and she has like these stunning green eyes. And I approached her and asked to take her portraits. Delia on the far right, um, I met her in Soho while I was working, and I remember just being like, hey, like, I love your look. Can we take pictures or can I photograph you? Um, Aziz had reached out to me on Instagram, but you know, that's kind of like what we know as the traditional, you know, meeting point, right? Like, hey, do you want to shoot? Hey, can we work together? Can we collaborate? Um, and that's kind of how people go from strangers to subjects, so to speak. So this is all like 2016, 2015 um, work. And then in fashion, I feel like this is another example of where I, f I feel that portrait photography has come into place. So this was photographed in Senegal. Um, these models did not speak much English. It's a Francophone country. Um, and I don't speak as much French as I like to think I do. Um, <laughs> so this was also very interesting because, again, it was a kind of lesson on communication and the importance of communication when capturing subjects, especially um, in some cases when there is a language barrier. This is an example in um, street photography slash photojournalism. Um, this was in Miami during Carnival. Um, the annual like uh, West Indian Caribbean celebrations that happen all over the world. I went down and I just was very inspired to capture um, the gathering in Miami. It's the biggest like North American carnival that happens. Sometimes they'll have them, you know, Eastern Parkway. They'll do like in Brooklyn. I don't know if everyone's familiar, but 
in Miami, it's the biggest like celebration in North America. So this was a woman who I walked by, and again, I'll kind of get into like my tips or tactics for shooting, but I wanted to just show some photos from early work. Um, and this is a screenshot from 2013, my Tumblr page. And I thought <laughs> it was a really nice place to start because if you kind of look, you'll see like the different kind of um, just perspectives and the things that interested me um, as a high schooler, I think, you know, children, um, everyday life. Uh, I commuted on the one train to school every day, so I think there was a lot of opportunities to observe. Um, I worked downtown, so, you know, when you work in Soho, I feel like there's always just the perfect strangers in New York. I mean, New York just has the perfect strangers in general, but I thought that this was just a really nice reminder of, you know, where my love for capturing people who I didn't know or connecting with people who I didn't know started. So um, I wanted to just kind of map out a little bit or like try and break down how my mind works and how it processes portrait photography. And so in thinking about this presentation, these three tips or tiers came up, um, technical, psychological, and social. So I'll kind of go in that order. And starting with the tech, Part. I always like to joke about how photographers, I feel like we're not really creatives, we're just like tech people with like $4,000 equipment that we walk around with. And I think, I think that a big thing for me um, in photography has always been just really understanding, you know, the ISO and the shutter speed, the aperture, the things that, you know, we all learn. But when I first got into photography and was coming to B&H, I was learning how to develop and work in black and white analog film. So, I learned how to shoot with the Minolta 700, um, manual focus, and I think shooting in black and white really just helped me become a better photographer, and I highly recommend that practice for anyone trying to work on their eye being stronger. But I think that um, this picture, for example, which was used on the flyer for this event, I thought was a great place to start because, well, one, you're looking at swimmers, right? And that's a very technical sport. But I wanted to kind of just talk a little bit about the importance of having technically sound work, in my opinion, as a good portrait photographer. So, you know, the rule of thirds, of course, we see that here, we see some like angles, we see like the parallelness. And I think that the lighting, for example, like that spot of lighting um, is so beautiful. And for me, when I take portraits, light is a huge technical element that I'm super obsessed with. I, I kind of feel like I'm like a light chaser or a moth of sorts. And then I feel like with the editing process, I get really nitpicky about like what the right select is and how I'm cropping it and how I'm using it. Um, I think even if we have really strong and powerful eyes for photography, I see a lot of times where like I might love a photo or like a photo, but not love it because the like the technical soundness isn't there for me. I don't know if, if anyone else ever feels like that, but I'm like, oh, if the contrast was just a little darker, or oh, if they just like, you know, push those highlights down or things like that. So even here, just, you know, I, I really like to be very ge geometric about my work. Um, so I thought this was a good example. Um, this is the same woman here, by the way, on the bottom right in the middle. And I wanted to use portraits of her just to kind of show different ranges in portrait photography with one subject, right? So I met this woman that day. This was shot for um, a Nike piece about senior, s senior citizens who synchronize swim in Harlem. So um, she had a really powerful story. And um, I, just, I just loved her energy. Her name was Monica. This is her at her apartment. And again, just like that, you know, center subject, like clean lines. I like to just keep things really like neat, centered. Um, here, I think lighting um, is a good example of something like in the technical space that I'm always paying attention to, pulling my subjects closer to light. Um, when it comes to working in studios or working with artificial lighting, sometimes I still kind of push myself to try and see where I can use as much natural lighting as possible, just because that's what I like and what I'm used to. But yeah, I love this picture so much. That's her granddaughter. This is another example, um, and I wanted to, again, use an athlete or uh, similarly a Nike um, portrait. Here, of course, you see on the technical side just the bokeh, the depth of field. So that's a big thing for me. When I first started shooting, I always felt like, wow, like 1.4, 1.8. Like, I didn't want to leave that range, and I still struggle sometimes to keep my work 
really shallow um, and also make sure things are in focus. But I think that as a just great portrait rule of thumb, for me at least, I always felt like low depth of field, um, shallow depth of field really brings this like intimacy and closeness into subjects. And this is a portrait, um, the last one of the kind of technical chapter I'm talking about of Simone Biles, um, obviously a gymnast. So again, just with the theme of athleticism and athletes, I wanted to just reiterate like the importance of um, just technicality, right? Like these are pretty straightforward portraits. She's looking straight up. Um, on the one on the left, we put a scrim on the right side, so that's where it's a little bit diffused. This was also um, turned into black and white by the client, which I felt like made it a much stronger portrait. Um, on the right, that was just kind of like a BTS shot of her on the bleachers in between takes, um, and there's no scrim on there, but I just like how these both look next to each other. Next, um, going into the psychological element, I, I kind of made this slide um, about my own how-to on how to approach new subjects. So um, when thinking about this again, I tried to break down like, okay, like what am I actually thinking when I'm approaching people and like what's the kind of behind the scenes of how my mind works? And I thought that one interesting way to think about it is like approaching a new subject, you know, let's say I'm working with Luther here. So he was part of the Harlem synchronized swimming team. He was the captain. He lived in this like brownstone for 60 years that he bought like for super cheap in the 80s and like he raised all his kids there and you know he had um, just this presence about him that I thought should just be revered and I felt like there was a lot of respect for him by the teammates and like I said he was the captain and so psychologically right one way that I would love to break down portraits or shooting strange or sorry capturing strangers is thinking about like okay is this person someone I'm photographing to be observed or am I trying to exhibit or display something? Am I trying to um, amplify or exalt a subject? This is uh, Method Man. He's a very legacy artist as well. Am I trying to show a connection with someone? Am I trying to show um, you know, us at the same level? So this is Stacey Abrams, for example. She's a politician. And this assignment was for Women's History Month. Approaching this, of course, knowing who she is, um, and it being for, this was for Rolling Stone. I felt like, okay, like how can I approach this in a way that, of course, gives her the respect of who she is, excuse me, as a as a politician, but also, you know, shows the viewer my perspective, which is someone who I want them to feel connected with, someone who I want, you know, I want them to feel like they're on the same level as her. So I told some bad jokes and um, <laughs> got her got her laughing. To go back to this, um, one way of looking at working with celebrities, for example, is. For me, um, I like to kind of really read the room. Like I like to use the term flow on the wall, another bad pun. <laughs> I'm really into puns. Um, instead of fly on the wall. And I feel like you know, it's very intimidating working in the industry space, working with talent. You know, I've had my lessons learned over the years. But in this situation, Method Man's a super cool guy. Um, this was shot for Essence Magazine. And the shoot was very successful, but I felt like this was the image they ended up using as the cover, but I think that something about me entering the situation and thinking, okay, like how am I approaching Method Man? He's a legacy musician. He's one of the founding fathers of hip hop. Like I want him to feel, I want the image to feel like he's, you know, on a pedestal or, or we're respecting or again revering him. So just kind of getting a little lower. Um, obviously, the background being this kind of um, church setting gives it another vibe. And just to go back to this again, this is again from Carnival. Um, a, the street photography element is here, but you know, sh parades and um, festivals. I feel like people are coming. You know, they're proud. They they're showing or they're displaying. Like obviously here, what she's wearing, um, her headpiece, like her beauty, her braids. Uh, and I feel like this was a really awesome picture and one of my favorites because of her eye contact as well. She's so present to me in the image. Um, but just to kind of backtrack, here I feel like, again, how am I approaching this subject? Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm documenting this moment. I'm capturing, capturing him in his space. You know, I'm showing him at eye level with the viewer. Here I'm displaying, I'm exhibiting, I'm, I'm respecting this culture, I'm showing a connection with this passerby. Here, again, I'm 
sort of, you know, showing this hip hop figure, showing this celebrity, trying to elevate him, trying to show him as a respected member of music and society. And with Stacey, a politician, I feel like for this assignment, I wanted to show a connection. I wanted to show um, just the kind of familiarity with the person viewing the picture. Uh, this last one is an image taken from, actually, let me slow down. No questions, right? Or compliments? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I saw her hand first. Um, Let me know if you need me to go back. Okay. Thanks. And you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering, um, you put a lot of thought into, I guess, how you want to depict each subject. Yeah. You talked a bit about the geometry that you plan to feature in your work. How are you thinking about like managing those factors while also trying to get the shot? Yeah. Um, That's a great question. So it's sort of a two-part question I'm hearing. I think like one of the reasons I started off with explaining like how I went about making this presentation is because the goal is that these things aren't things you're thinking about every second. They become symbio symbiotic or you know, they become like, you know, yeah, exactly. It kind of all just happens at the same time. Um, so of course it's not always gonna be like, okay, I got the perfect you know, angle shot, sometimes the beauty in it is like those off moments and the mistakes, but um, not mistakes, but you know, just the, the other images on the contact sheet, right? So for me, um, this is like after years of just like observing like how I do approach my work and what I am doing, that I'm able to think about it like this, but um, it's not like every time I shoot, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I won't use an image because it's not perfectly lined up, or I won't use something because, you know, it's not, I don't know, the depth of field isn't perfect enough. The, the ones I selected for this presentation do show those elements. Um, and then the second part of what you said, I don't know if I answered the whole thing. I asked about lighting and lighting versus like studios. Just like in general, like. Um, I guess how you approach them differently. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think photography, as we all know, with a lot of things, it's like practice makes perfect, right? And I think as you train your eye and become more familiar with light and like what good light, you know, that's, that's relative and subjective to all of us, but what, whatever good light may look like, I feel like you get better at catching those, those moments. Like for example, here, like this is just him on his chair, but like the light is, like, I love this picture, you know? If we go back to this moment as well, like, this is just, like, like this is the, these are the things about photography that make me very happy. Like, when it's just, it's just, we have a god given light source, you know? So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I definitely like to try and find, you know, where the light is. I think if I'm in um, a parade setting or a festival setting, which, by the way, is a great way to practice capturing people if you're not comfortable approaching strangers. People usually go to parades and festivals to be photographed, especially if they're in them. So just a kind of good way to practice that. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'll pull someone to the side. Or sometimes, like in this moment, this guy was being held up in traffic and just came out of his car. And like the moment was just, you know, really great. I'm not looking at this and thinking about light per se. I'm more focused on just like, I don't know, I feel like he's confronting the viewer. I feel like he's... You know, it's, it's very unapologetic. So um, this one for me is more about like the, the motion and the, the eye contact and lighting. So yeah, yes. So you've talked about the psychological component and how you approach a talent. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you deal with a situation when you don't feel comfortable and you don't get an easy connection? Oh, I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I flow out the door. <laughs> um, no, it's a good question. I mean, yeah, it, so basically how I deal with situations where I may not feel comfortable, that's what you said, right? Yes. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm, I love photography because we're always, I mean, life in general, we're always students, right? I was just talking to someone um, downstairs about that too, like we're always learning about ourselves and I find that at 27 versus 17 I had a lot more guts approaching 
like people for images like in that 2013 Tumblr screen grab I showed you, for example, versus now. So I feel like um, for me, it's about understanding where the anxiety comes from, right? Like, are you afraid of, you know, meeting someone for the first time? Do you feel uncomfortable with the client on set? Are you like subconscious about the work? Like, what is the actual root of the discomfort? I feel like that's a great way to approach it. And then in a more practical way, if I'm not feeling it, like I still have to get the image. <laughs> so I, you know, you have, I mean, you, you kind of learn how to get over it. I think um, for being forgiving of yourself, I think that's a, a big thing. Like if I feel like I didn't get the shot or if I feel like I was rushing or um, I don't know, if, if things didn't go as, as planned, I've had to learn over the years to just, you know, this might sound cliche, but just do your best and, and trust that your work and you being hired is because, you know, it's more than, it's more than the anxiety, you know? It's like you obviously are hired for a reason, so it's definitely a work in progress. Okay, so connect before you click. This is um, the social kind of idea. So this is really big for me. Um, I feel like a lot of times we'll be on a set, let's say, and, you know, someone's in the dressing room or, you know, the there's PAs hanging out or maybe makeup artists who are just chilling and there's not, you know, intros maybe formally made or people aren't communicating. I feel like I'm very big on making sure I go and introduce myself and, you know, show my face, shake someone's hand, um, just kind of treat the situation like we're all human beings and not here to, you know, get work done right away. I feel like it's really good to make sure you and your subject or a client or whoever's on set understands, you know, I'm the photographer, nice to meet you, I'm super excited to be here. Small things like that, you'd be surprised at how much more connected people will feel or comfortable people will feel um, on a set with you or in any shooting environment. Um, and just a reminder, you know, we're all human beings, right? Like I um, mentioned working with artists, so Cardi B, um, amazing. Did you guys see her Grammys look? Yeah. Oh my gosh. She, my favorite. So this was in 2017. This was the first, okay, so let me backtrack. I was hired to do basically BTS and um, stills for her music videos from about 2017 to, mm, I would say up until like even last year. Like I still um, get to capture the magic that goes into like a Cardi B production, which is like, Disney World, basically. But um, one thing that I always really appreciated about being a stills photographer is, you know, first of all, the video people do the work. You're like, okay, set it up, gaff it, yes. And you go, <laughs> just kidding. You go in and you're able to really, you know, just see beautiful lighting, beautiful moments and get the shots. But I wanted to put this picture from five years ago next to this picture from last year. So, um, I got to shoot the Met Gala last year. That was really cool. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, black woman to do so. yes, <laughs> this is true. Yes, first black woman commissioned by Vogue to photograph the Met Gala, and you know I always joke about needing to print out that email like and just frame it, like then be like, hey, are you available for the Met? I'm like, yes, but. <laughs> A big reason why I was um, brought on and got the opportunity, even though technically I'm, technically I'm a photojournalist, like in disguise as a celebrity photographer and event photographer, but I feel like well that's, well, that's what I like to consider it. But I feel like a big thing that the editors mentioned was just how in my images, um, and they, they asked me to supply images of other event work as well, but in my images they felt like you know it was nice to see the connection or, or how I made subjects feel or something. I don't know, it's weird to, to see your work outside of your head, but I get what they're saying. So I wanted to include some of these just as a reminder of like the humanness of everyone, right? Like the Met Gala was like a high school cafeteria with like the jocks and the cool kids, and like the fashionable girls and stuff like that. But you can just see like, I don't know, the beauty of just humans being humans, right? Um, and this is a great example of that as well. This is Buster Rhymes. Thank you, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is Busta Rhymes, you know, another hip hop legend. This is like on set. This is actually like a BTS kind of moment, but I pulled them away and um, got a shot. This is the, the close up version. And then this is the farther up version on the left. Thank you. But again, to the 
idea of connecting before you click, right? Like, <laughs> when I first met him and asked him for a photo, he was like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> like, he literally was like, I'm busted, like, don't. Like, <laughs> and it was, it was scary because he's tall and less rhymes, but um, this was us an hour later, can you imagine? Um, and there's a really funny video on my Instagram somewhere, like on the highlight reel of the shoot of like him reacting to seeing the picture and being like, wow, this is fire, and being really excited. But I think um, it's really fun for me to approach working with artists um, and celebrities, especially when there's that connection element, because of course, you know, we're more used to seeing paparazzi shots or like um, red carpet photos of celebrities, but when you can get like a really beautiful image of talent, um, and not just like high profile talent, just any, any subject, when you can get that really beautiful, authentic moment, like on the left, for example, where I probably told a bad joke, um, you get these beautiful, you know, photo moments. And I think putting it in black and white, I don't know, it just felt right. I felt it was the right thing to do. On the right was him at a studio session. Um, again, like sometimes, you know, it's important as far as back to the, you know, the subject of this talking to strangers to know when to kind of step in and when to just sit back and watch. That's a really big part of it. Um, you never want to make a client or a subject feel uncomfortable. Um, I think that's also where practice makes perfect, right? Like learning how to get those moments or getting your client to trust you when you say, okay, just really quick, let me get the shot really quick. And they know, all right, I'll give her 10 seconds. You know, that's a big thing with Cardi. I'll give her that 15 seconds because I know she'll get the shot, you know, and I can get back to what I need to do. But I thought this was a really good contrast of like the portrait photography, but also like the photojournalism that I love um, with Busta. This is another image from, um, this is from Harlem, an, uh, a parade called the African American Day Parade. And what I love about this picture was behind the camera, I was really giving this girl like a lot of, like I was, I don't know, I was we were really connecting as far as like me just hyping her up. And I think that this moment and this image, you know, you see like the, kind of the different things I talked about with like the technical elements. Like I said, I like the rule of thirds. I like things to be centered. You see like the blurry background um, with the depth of field. Um, and then I think most importantly, it all comes together because you have this moment, like this shot, right? Um, and being able to, you know, say whatever I was saying behind the camera, I think gave her more energy. This is a parade, so of course they're walking like 10, 20 blocks, but sometimes, um, you know, actually like communicating with your subjects, giving them like encouragement. I mean, they're human beings, right? So it's like, okay, you know, sometimes joking around, all right, I see you like saying small things. I find make people sometimes come alive a little bit more in front of the camera. Um, and then this was a cool shoot from a few years ago as well. This is a young man who um, was just highlighted by Nike for uh, Black History Month. And I love the lighting and I just, again, think that the idea of working with strangers or working with people I, I don't know and then being able to find moments to get these beautiful portraits or um, just just kind of documentation of them is is something that for me is what photography is all about. Here are a few selected images from work I do with the New York Times and that's really cool. Um, I first worked with them a few years ago on a photo story about black figure skaters which was amazing and really awesome to get to work on. And then since then, I've been able to do different portraits, um, just of, I don't know, just diff different stories. So on the top left um, was a really powerful piece about a domestic violence victim. And that was very interesting because approaching someone who's been through trauma or a story that's very serious, of course, the tone and the way that you, you know, go into that situation um, is, a, is a very different energy. On the bottom right, um, there was a story I worked on about um, the resilience of black home ownership, and it talked about basically just the some of the racism and like the issues that exist in the home bio market for um, people of color. So that woman on the bottom right was losing her home, and she was talking about what that what that was um, what that process was like. And you know, sometimes I think working with the times on stories, it can be like a reminder of how powerful photography can be. Um, a lot of people who I'm sent to capture, like maybe have never gotten their photo taken before for the Times or something, or they're just excited um, to be like in the paper. And I think that's something I really enjoy. So that last one was kind of different 
I guess like more everyday people. This one um, in the middle is a portrait of um, Andre De Shields. He's an actor on Broadway. On the far right, um, his name is Jaquel Spivy. He's also an actor. And the far left is a human rights lawyer. Um, and yeah, again, just different portraits and different approaches to capturing people that you know I'm meeting for the first time or have an hour with, 30 minutes with to capture them. Um, I think I'll end with talking about Jaquel on the far right. He moved to New York from like Baltimore, the DMV area, and had um, the opportunity to be like the star of a Broadway play, Broadway show. And the assignment for the Times was to kind of capture him like on his way to work. So he lived in like the Hell's Kitchen area. So I met him at his apartment and we just kind of like walked through Times Square. And this was the last shot I took of him before he entered the backstage area to go to work. Um, and I just thought that the cropping of it and the lighting of it just really gave it this really special vibe and feel. Um, and yeah, that's that's just, again, like three different pictures, three different moments with strangers um, and different approaches, again, with the technical, the psychological and the social elements allow for such different kinds of portraits to be made. I think I ended with this. Yes, lastly, there's only one of you and one of them. So why not be as memorable as your photos? So I take um, kind of what you were asking about, like the branding and marketing. I feel like I've always taken like, you know, how I show up on sets very seriously. Of course, ooh, excuse me, of course we all do. But I think that like one thing that's been really interesting to experience in my career and like trying to come up in the photo industry is observing like how your own presence and your own um, character and energy as a photographer can be remembered just as much, of course, as the quality of your work. And a lot of times people want to hire people that they just like to work with or they want to be around or make them feel comfortable. Um, and that's something that I think is very important and needs to be remembered. Like, of course, we all want to take great pictures and, you know, have powerful portfolios. But, you know, let's not sleep on ourselves. You know, it's a very important um, thing to remember that, you know, you, like I said here, like you, you can be just as memorable as your photos, you know, for the right reasons. So. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well if you done, have well done. more questions, feedback, or Beyonce tour tickets for me, please email envelopeblowingala.com. <laughs> okay, the question was, what lenses do I use? So I'll do that one first. I'm really a fan of the 35 1.4. I shoot on um, a Canon 5D Mark IV. I think when I was first exposed to photography, like the Mark III was like the thing, and so I just wanted the Mark III, and now I have the Mark IV, so I'm just like <laughs> um, a Canon girl in that aspect. But yeah, I love 35 1.4. I feel like um, recently I did like a B&H, um, like 21 questions thing that's on their YouTube, and they asked like what lens I would do as my go-to. And I had said the 24 1.4 as well. I just feel like that would be an interesting, I don't know, just like the wide and the, the shallow. Like that's, that's my, that's my, I don't know, sweet spot. So, yeah. And then you said, what, flash or? Yeah, flash or just natural most of the time. Well, yeah, I think none of these pictures except for the Met Gala pictures I showed were flash, yeah. So I'm usually like trying to do natural. I know like, you know, there's the balance and some people are really magicians when it comes to flash. I'm not there yet, but yeah, I'm I'm a big natural natural light person. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Do I license celebrity photos? Like, do I license them out? Um, it depends on the subject and the terms. Like, a lot of times, like, I've been lucky enough to retain a lot of the rights to my work, but it's, it, like, not every photo of an artist I've taken I own. So it just depends. If people reach out, I have to just double check and see if I am, a, like, I'm, I'm, I'm legally allowed to or um, maybe, I don't know, I like to be very respectful of the relationships I have with teams. So a lot of times, even though a lot of the work that people like to share of mine is celebrity work, I try and like ask permission or just let people know like, hey, like someone wants to use this in this capacity. But yeah, honestly, it hasn't been like anything crazy or, or 
bad. Why do you ask? You're just wondering, like, about licensing or, like, okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good question. I think it's one of the most common questions. Um, she asked, do I have any suggestions for people breaking or wanting to break into celebrity photography? So I feel like, well, the kind of classic way is like, you know, you go to concerts or you reach out to venues, try to shoot like, you know, performances and share the photos that way. Um, I feel like in the day and age of Instagram, you know, if you're good at just doing research and you're steadfast with finding like who's in whose circles, it's, I, I genuinely think it's a lot easier now to just find who the A&R is, who the marketing person is, who like who's tagged in the photos, who's around these artists, um, and reaching out and sharing work. I feel like um, people really underestimate the power of like a cold call or like DM. Like for the Met Gala, ooh, for the Met Gala, for example, I had um, like a DM from like six years ago of me <laughs> emailing someone and being like, "Hi, like my name is Flo. Like I really want to shoot the Met Gala. Like you, you know." And they were like, "No, you can't do that." <laughs> But um, I think years later, you know, it's, it's interesting the power of like, you know, manifestation, but also just like genuinely just reaching out and shooting your shot. Um, I want to give a more concrete answer as well. Um, I think being, um, we're in an age where tagging goes a long way. Like I've seen like Drake, for example, he like will often like take a tag photo and like, sh and, like post it of artists, like people, you know, people like good pictures of themselves, you know, so if you're genuinely trying to get into that space, I would say, yeah, like, obviously the networking part is important, but um, just putting yourself in spaces where you can capture those artists or um, those musicians, whomever it is, and um, yeah, going from there. I can maybe think about more tips too, um, if that wasn't that helpful, <laughs> but I hope that's some places that from, yeah. Okay, this side. Yes. Okay. What piece of information do I know now that I wish I knew when I first started my business? I wasn't shooting raws. Yeah, 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 everyone. I was that girl. Because honestly, the thing is, I didn't know I was going to be a photographer. Like, I. I went to high school and did photo as like an elective. Maybe I didn't mention this, but my intro to photography was like eighth grade. I went to school and you know, you have like art electives, like sculpture and like painting and stuff. So I did photo and I graduated from high school and I went into advertising. I wanted to be a creative director, an art director. And then while I was interning, my photo career kind of started. But I, you know, in my high school, we were doing like black and white film, like I said, like developing and Maybe I missed the Raws, <laughs> the Raws last <laughs> But yeah, I wish I knew that I was supposed to shoot more Raws and like just like, you know, being a bit better with like the tech parts of like backing up my stuff and things like that. Like, you know, being, being better there. I wish I was better at that, yeah. <laughs> Not honest answer. Yes. Hi. Hey. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, lots of work. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. So I was gonna try and mention, like, kind of snackable tips. Like, I'm really big on like a compliment. You know, like, y you'd be surprised like how far that can go and like how much of a conversation that will start up. I feel like it's just really important to be super humble and like let your ego go when it comes to street photography. Because a lot of times, you know, we'll take a no or like a no thank you as like. I don't know, personal, and it's, you know, you don't know why someone might have said no. And I think that's something I had to really, like, get out of my head with. But I think comp uh, a compliment can go a long way. And I feel like, um, I don't know, do, do people, any street photographers here, do they find that having your camera, like, on you and, like, the person seeing that is, like, helpful or intimidating or not? Like, I, I think so. Yeah, like them seeing the camera. Sometimes. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Um, so I think to your benefit, though, if, if you're being presentable, respectful, a compliment, like you said, would be effective as well. Like, people love nice pants. I love nice pants. So um, just going out your way to be as, like, to 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, I don't know, like, you, you have to kind of rehearse it and, like, find your voice, like, in shooting. Like, a lot of times I'll be like, oh, my gosh, like, I... I hate to bother you, but I love what you're wearing. Can I, you know, like sometimes you just find ways to be like, wait, like, do you have two seconds so I can please take your picture? Like this lighting is so, you know, like stuff like that. See how good I, that is? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really practice makes perfect, you know? And honestly, like, you'd be surprised. Like, you, you really miss a lot of the shots you don't take. So there's so many times where I've had, like, what I call photographer's guilt by just, like, missing a shot because I didn't ask or I was too scared to just, like, Get it, and then I'm like, I'm never gonna get that moment again because moments only happen once. And I'm like, you know, you, you, you have to just break out of that fear and just put yourself out there. So, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. What is the craziest contract that was given to you? Because in this business, a lot of contracts are given with unrealistic um, expectations. Okay, I won't say the client name. But <laughs> I got hired to literally like shoot and direct like a spot. Um, and I ended up not just being like the director, but basically the AD on set, which is like the assistant director who like basically tells people what to do. Yeah. Um, so that was it, was, it was a really, it was an up and coming artist. And the piece was going to be like on like, like in like a Times Square billboard real estate thing. So not only could I like not share like the billboard because that wasn't in my contract, but I had done like all this work like and gotten paid like basically just for one of the roles, even though I ended up doing like two or three of them. Um, and the client was a very, you know, they're a very great company because they have very smart people who are good at like putting things together. But I felt like I did a lot of work just for me and them to be on the same page as we were when we started. So it, it felt like I did a lot of work, did more roles than I technically was paid for, and then I wasn't allowed to ever talk about it or share it on my side. <laughs> so yeah, that that one kind of sucked. Yeah. Yes? Um, you mentioned the night before you quit, and I think I, I'm a high school student who does a lot of street photography, and I asked a lot of people that I photograph, and I find that most of the conversations happen after the photograph. Mm. Connect whenever. <laughs> no, no, but well, that me using that kind of was more so in the context of like celebrity photography and shooting. So that's that's where that was. But to your point, I'm just curious. How do you approach those street photography portraits if you're connecting afterwards? Like, how do you go into them? Just wondering. Like, if it. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I don't usually start it, but it's like that. that's a, that I think everyone heard that, right? Connecting after you click as well is an interesting point. Yeah, I think it's so interesting how the different contexts and situations, like the rules can just you know, there's not one one size fits all, right? Like this is all just through my perspective, my yeah. Um, lens, but I'm going to think about that as well more. I'm sure that I've had moments like that as well with my work um, or with shooting, but I'm happy that you made that point because it's definitely, um, I feel like it's like 50 50. It just depends on the situation. Yes, I love your hair. Thank you. Do you ever deal with model producers for any of this? Personally? Oh my gosh. And how <laughs> is that when you met? Yes, someone asked me what I wish I knew before, and I think that's something else I wish I knew. Like, there's, um, like most of my work now, I think, is more like commission based or like, you know, I, I don't know, whatever it is that I'm doing. But like, people, <laughs> people gravitate towards the street photography like so much more. So even though it's on my site and stuff, I remember like one time, um, I'll just say because it didn't work out, but Polaroid was releasing that like, um, that thing they have where you can make photos look like Polaroids and they wanted to use some photos from this carnival series. And I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. So that's something that unfortunately like I um, have dealt with or not had before that's, 
but I'm still learning as a business person. I'll be can candid there. Um, your question was, how do I deal with having them or getting model so, releases? Like, with this one, yeah. Right. So you don't have to have photos. Right. Photo, but to use your likeness for any of advertising purposes. Yeah. How do you now go out when you do think for yourself and do street photography? Or are you like, yo, sign this paper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that so that's something that I like I haven't I, I'm actually in that space now where like the next thing I do or will do like this, I will take that like precaution. But yes, I, I can't use or I don't use any of these photos commercially. Um, or, and I haven't. Um, at the most, it's like on my website, or if someone wants to like share the story, like on a photo blog or a photo, I don't know, outlet or something like that. But yes, going forward, my plan. If anyone has tips on this, please feel free to share after. My plan is to probably have an assistant or someone with me to um, hand those out, and that's just what I've learned from like doing my own research on like how people people do it. But um, yeah, this work is like. 2016, 2015, like this specific work, and I kind of mixed in older work with new work just to show different sides. But yeah, that's something I didn't know until after someone asked about it. So yeah, growing pains. Time for one more. One more? What? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. You pick. <laughs> okay, okay. Sure. Yes. Yes, so I, I basically took pictures on set of a music video for this song um, that Fat Joe put out called All The Way Up, and then like that song, I mean, those pictures, I emailed them to like the producer and the director of the video, and then um, they got passed along to an executive at Atlantic Records, and that's like the, the story of how it like kind of really started. But before that, I was, interested in portrait photography and like these are the kinds of jobs I was not jobs but these are the kinds of work I was doing on my own like street photography and things like that but the story is technically that music video yeah cool one more okay yes yeah <laughs> hey mm. I know it's weird, right? I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. It's a good question. Honestly, I, I, I realize I had a style, because I guess I look for the same things, right? Like I'm looking for great lighting. I'm looking for like strong eye contact. I'm like really big on the editing process too, and I've gotten better as an editor as far as like. I'm not talking about like crazy photoshopping. I'm just talking about making the right selection. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times we like don't even realize sometimes where just the edit will throw off, you know, an opportunity to capture or to show the essence of a shoot. And I've learned that also by working with editors and being hired and seeing what they select versus like what I like and how that works. So I feel like I look for the same things in my work though, like lighting, eye contact, like this pic this this triptych. I'll call it is a great example of you know the depth of field, the strong focus, um, like the solemnness, I guess of sorts. I don't know if that's a word, but as far as like a style, um, I I really try not to like take on the celebrity photography uh, term or or word. I recently came up with the term celebrity photojournalist, which I think I'm gonna roll with for this year. But <laughs> I think in general, I really consider portrait photography and like photojournalism to be like the styles of photography that I like to do. Yeah. Thank you so much everybody. Woo!